this sort of facility was opened in, in 1960, and it uh, was used for uh, nuclear research. We did manufacture nuclear fuel there, and that's well known. Um, the, uh, the operations there terminated in uh, 1984, and uh, the building was was cleaned up and decommissioned and decontaminated. Uh, and it was overseen by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The work there was under a, a license by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, some of the work was uh, done for the Department of Energy also. Um, so certainly, I mean, employees of Atomics International uh, worked in DeSoto. They also worked up on the Hill. Um, so I first started working uh, up on the Hill in 1990 after having worked as a, as a safety engineer in DeSoto. And um, I uh, uh, was then the manager of nuclear safety and uh, radiation safety, and have been ever since. So uh, yes, I've been on the hill for a long time. So what was your next question? And the question was, you know, if you're in DeSoto, or handles the RNHF, Actually, the larger question was what were all of, all of the sources, what were all of the sources that uh, of, of the waste and materials and so forth that, that uh, were handled through the RMHF? As, as Brian mentioned in his, in his uh, talk, uh, the RMHF was initially uh, used as a staging area, a staging facility for nuclear fuel. As you know, uh, the hill had uh, sell, uh, several nuclear reactors, uh, research reactors, um, and so uh, the army check was used to store the fuel which initially came onto the hill, and then it would go into the reactors, and the, uh, the reactor uh, uh, would operate. Uh, the fuel uh, was then taken out of the reactors and stored in the army check, and then later shipped off site to other EV facilities. And uh, the vaults that uh, Brian mentioned, that were in building 22, that, that they were dry storage. So unlike um, uh, the fuel storage that uh, is used, for instance, in the, in the commercial plants, uh, is uh, so water storage, but these were dry storage because we didn't have to cool the uh, uh, fuel. Great. Um, so uh, at so the few the materials that, that were handled there were exclusively from the area four activities. Um, so the reason that I asked and perhaps you can answer is uh, in various sources I've seen where deep planning operations and as you say packaging and handling uh, from a variety of different sites, yes. not just rocket dimes, but also from the rest of the country. Yes, we did do uh, cladding operations in the hot lab. Uh, we took uh, fuel that had been uh, I mean, irradiated and exposed in other reactors, in other facilities in the country, and we uh, removed the cladding from the fuel. Uh, we sent the cladding back to the, the Department of Energy, and we sent the fuel back to the Department of Energy. It was a, it was a way of uh, waste minimization. And where was that work done? That was done in the in uh, the hot lab up in, in the Santa Susana. So, so some of the materials would, uh, would flow through the armor chef, they'll be stored temporarily uh, and when they were received, and then before they would use be shipped off site. So as I say, the armor chef was kind of a staging area uh, for fuel, uh, both new fuel and irradiated fuel. Um, well, that, the reason that I asked for clarification is one of the first things that I thought that I heard was that it was, it handled only material from Area 4, so that's what I wanted to get a more clear understanding of. Uh, so most of the waste has been removed. Can you tell me how much of the waste has been removed? How much of the waste has been removed? Another one of the, uh, I'm um, sorry, I didn't get this gentleman in the blue shirt. Brian, Brian, I can't believe I'm sorry. So Brian, you said that much of the waste has been removed. Let me, uh, let me answer that in a general sense, and then in a more specific sense. Um, when I first uh, started working on the bill in 1990, um, 
my predecessor uh, and his colleagues made an estimate of how much material uh, had been used on the hill and actually generated in terms of curies, which is a measure of radioactivity. And the estimate was approximately 100 million curies. Now that's a lot of radioactivity. And uh, it was uh, not only the fuel itself, but also the fission products that were generated during the operation of the reactors. Um, over the years, all that was removed and sent to a DOE disposal site. And I would estimate now we have probably less than uh, three curies of activity left. So 100,000, I mean, you know, 100 million, all the way down to three. So obviously, we're almost at the end of the job. Now, now specifically for the RMHF, um, we have been undergoing contamination of the various facilities over the last uh, several years. We've been shipping out waste, as I say, and again, as, as Brian said, since the last 15 years or so, it's been used as a staging area for the radioactive waste of other facilities that were really demolished and decontaminated, and we uh, use the RMHF for both characterizing and packaging radioactive waste. So everything comes into uh, the RMHF, and then we ship it off to uh, places like uh, uh, the Nevada test site, which is a whole other reactive uh, repository. So I don't know off the top of my head how much waste Ship town, but as I said, we estimated 100 million curies down to three. That's 99.999% is gone. 